So capacitors are an alternative way of storing electricity and energy compared to batteries or other storage methods. So a quick overview of different storage methods. Batteries work by having a chemical reaction happen. And these are like famous generalizations. Um, chemical reaction happens where electrons are transferred and also positive ions are transferred. Positive ions called cations. And that causes electricity to flow. There's a legit chemical reaction in between the some of the chemical energy into power. Capacitors, unlike batteries, do not have a chemical reaction really. What they do is instead they have some ions floating around in solution. And ions are like salt, those are plus and negative things. And the plus ions we put on one side and the negative ones on the other side on a surface. And the higher the surface area of it, like so the more holes and stuff, the more charge we can store. Then these charges, when they discharge, they mix and move around, causing movements of electrons and positive stuff that causes energy to flow. The advances of capacitors, and we also have something called ultra-capacitors, super-capacitors, and a couple other classifications, which is capacitors with modifications so they can hold more energy, is that capacitors are generally safer with the chemicals. They can have better charging efficiency sometimes, so more energy you put in as energy gets out. They can release the energy a lot faster, and they can handle many more times recharging and discharging safely, and they're not as hurt if you don't fully charge one thing. Batteries can hold a lot more power and energy for the same density, though, and for the same mass, and for the same volume. They are batteries are also harder to miniaturize, though. Then there's like a bunch of other alternative ones that have different scalabilities and stuff like that. There's flywheels, which are spinning wheels. There's gravity stores like having a dam, where you dam up a bunch of stuff. Um, so a bunch of things like that. I want to do, go along and say some stuff about how I think we can incorporate capacitors, which are also used in a lot of like day electronics a lot, to smooth out charges. So capacitors can store a little bit of energy and release them later very quickly, which can help if a, this charge has fluctuations, smooth out the fluctuations. And it's oftentimes used in a bunch of electronics for that reason. It also has memory application where you can store memories in little, little charges. So a bunch of uh, capacitors have a bunch of uses. I want to talk about how we can make them even more functional as a um, so we can incorporate them even more in technology and maybe develop them even more. So one idea is that capacitors actually could make energy for your entire system. And one is if you have a thin membrane that certain ions can go more easily through it one direction, so like positive goes to the left and negative goes to the right, you can actually use this in some places to charge up and by separating the ions. Now, where does the energy to separate these ions come from? Well, it could come from heat. And then you absorb heat cooling down your device and turn some of it back into electricity, charging up your device or in hot weather. And that can help with thermal regulation. Or if you just lay it out in hot weather. Another thing that you could get this energy from, it's not only from heat, it could get it from sunlight, even though it's not as efficient as a solar cell. But it might be more efficient than having a separate solar cell in a capacitor. And you could also get it from other things like mechanical energy, from say king vibrations. So then you have something that both stores electricity and gives off electricity. And you can look at this up with um capacitors with uh you can look at this up with solar cells that work in the dark. This is one idea that's kind of like this. So another thing along this line, and maybe a little bit better, is to have capacitors 
it's how to hold the device more as a voltage and power regulator, so you have much more smooth voltage and power throughout the whole device than with less ripples and currents. And also use them as stores, figure out how to build them in for two in one. And two in one. Again, capacitors could turn mechanical energy into electricity, which can help in a couple of ways. They can reduce vibrations that could hurt electronics or affect electronics usage. They can be used as sensors. They can strengthen the whole material. And something I forgot to mention is that capacitors can be made as actual structural parts of a device that can make the whole device stronger because they can be a carbon nanomaterials, possibly which are super ultra strong. And then the outer casing can also be made super ultra strong. And then, and that's most of the material, then you just have a little bit of liquid inside of the nanomaterials, which can also give some strength more by holding together. So that is a useful thing right there. Capacitors can be used to make a bunch of sensors. And this includes mechanical sensors, and they have been. Touch sensors, some touch screens work based on a very similar principle. Thermal sensors, and the fancy one is that they can be used to make um, chemical sensors. Because sometimes the chemical itself can change, can be the ions from chemicals itself can be used to actually charge a capacitor like sweat or something, or certain chemical reactions. They can also be used for pressure sensors, which is kind of a, a mechanical sensor right there. So that's a lot of use, and by combining an energy store as a sensor system, that's good. Another thing that they can be used for is capacitors can be used as a um, for maybe in the future to as a water filtration device for stuff like electrodialysis where you put a electric current on something and ions flow to either side of it and in between you get water that is higher purity. Then if you use those ions and store them up later on, you can recombine them on both sides and get some power out of it or use it as an energy storage system. That is less for your computer and stuff for it. Everything else is more for electronics. This will be more for large scale grid storage by far. We could also maybe increase the capacitor ability by combining with a flow battery. And a flow battery, what it simply is, is different than a normal battery in that we have something that holds a bunch of liquid, two containers that hold a bunch of liquid, that then we pump in, and then when we pump it in, the little cell that we pump it in acts as a battery, then we pump out the waste, the two things chemical reacting, and then we pump in new chemicals to start a new battery reaction, then we can make it continuous. But why not combine both principles and have something that's both a capacitor and the flow battery for the best of both worlds with storage. Just an idea right there. And also you can combine that if you want to have large scale stuff, why don't you use the chemicals that's reacting and everything, be chemicals from the water, so you have the water filtration idea also combined right there into one big machine that you really do want to build for so many reasons. And again, we have used capacitors in the past for memories and computers for a wide range of reasons. So combining this with a memory system might be a wonderful, great idea. Now, thinking how to combine it all is very, might be very, very difficult because it's always some, you always, if you don't have a set thing for one thing, use it only, it does suffer. If you have something that's memory and holding electricity for your computer, you have to do more complicated programming, and you lose some ability to hold electricity and some ability for memory for space. But because you combine it, you don't have to have two separate devices, which might use up more power and may take up more space. <laughs> you like that way. 
and maybe you can have more wiggle room with your optimization. Batteries can still have a lot of advantages in this amount of energy they can store for the same volume mass, but if you make those advantages a little less, you can have more capacitors placed in your device, which might also make the wear and tear on the battery less expensive. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the turn out. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers in here and 4,000 watts hours, which is really hard, but with your help, I think, into it. But if you have any of these for future videos, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.